So how do you feel about kids respecting authority today, currently, from how pe kids respected authority when you were a kid? Um, well, there's a huge difference between what's going on now and what went on, you know, I won't tell my age, but some time <laughs> ago when I was a kid. And I think um, parents, there was a greater emphasis on respecting authority. And um, so for an example, I knew that if I, if my teacher called home and said that I was misbehaving, I would probably be expecting to get a swat of some sort. Like my mother would make sure that I was disciplined. And today, um, not that I necessarily totally agree with, disagree with all of it, but I think that parents, um, because they too have sort of a, a hearty disrespect for authority, that that sort of bleeds on over into what you see kids with authority and even how you see children with their own parents. And so I do think that we need to revisit some of that because I think unless you, my philosophy is unless you learn how to follow, you'll never know how to lead. So, do people respect you it, uh, for what you've accomplished? Do kids respect you for what you've accomplished? Um, I think that in terms of the kids, and again, I mean, this all, almost sort of works backwards. Um, adults sort of set the stage, and um, if I can look and speak to what I see happening on the national front with our current president, um, I see so much disrespect for him in the office. Um, and I think that we as parents have to recognize um, that kid, children, teenagers, and young adults are watching us. And they listen to us. And even though we don't think that's going on, that is going on. And when they see, hear adults, whether in private or in public, disrespecting authority um, in a way that I've even seen with our president, I think that it speaks to, it speaks volumes to where we are even as a country. So how exactly do you think that uh, discipline should change for children? Um, well, I think that there just needs to be sort of a general, um, I mean, I, I recognize that technology has really sort of um, gone in a direction that our, my parents, my mother had trouble trying to figure out how to um, do the microwave. And um, I can remember what a challenge that was, and I, I think that there is this huge quantum leap in a lot of the activities that we see today. And yet at the same time, there is still the human nature of everything that goes on. Like you can have great technology, but at some level we still have to uh, interface with one another. And um, I know as a mother and as a grandmother, uh, some of the small ways in which I've even changed as a person, and I was just saying this to someone the other day, when I see a small child, and sometimes, you know, the kid might be coming up wanting to say hi to this stranger, and I'm really reluctant to do that because of all of the horrible things that you hear about with children today. Yes. So I think that some of what happens starts to impact us in ways that we don't even recognize. And yet, at the same time, I think that there's some basic fundamental behaviors that even as adults, we need to try and hang on to because those are like the, the mainstay of who children grow up to be. And if we set the stage in a negative tone, then they're just going to feed back to what's been given to them. Um, how I would change it as a as a um, as a grandmother, I my granddaughter who is a senior in high school was um, I believe mistreated by a teacher, and 
I can remember as we were having this conversation and asking her how she was behaving and asking how the teacher was behaving, and I made the decision that there was a serious problem. And um, we went to the school and I insisted that the principal, the teacher, and my granddaughter and my daughter, that we all sat in a room to try and come to some sort of understanding. And I said to my granddaughter when it was all over, you still need to apologize to this teacher because there was a way in which you could have dealt with the problem different than what you did. And you have to respect her as your teacher. Um, and while that was a bitter pill for her to swallow, she did, she apologized to her. And as a result of that, we did move her out of that teacher's room because I thought the teacher had lost the, be lost the ability to really teach her. But in the end, I think that there were some lessons learned on both ends. And some of what I think I try and do, because I think about a situation that just happened recently where another teacher, and a lot of times there is the, the, the power individuals in the power think that they can misbehave and um, I said to this teacher who again I went after and I said to her you have to because she was a young she was like still in in college and I said to her you can't take a person's trust you can't use your power to gain trust of these children and then turn around and sabotage them if you're not going to come along and help problem solve, then maybe you don't need to know their business. Because if you're going to take it and try and use it against them, then I think that that's really inappropriate. And I use the incident with her as a person who founded an organization um, working against a major um, um, state organization. I realized that there were some things that I needed for those parents to say to me and I would say to them, I need to know everything. I need to know what you aren't willing to tell anybody because when we went up into court, I needed to make sure that I was on solid ground. And, um, but they also understood that I wasn't going to take and sabotage them, that it was kind of like confidential, privileged information. Now, whether or not it was, I don't know, but morally for me, it was the bigger issue. And so I think it's on all fronts, um, whether it's the children, the parents, parents with teachers, teachers, the whole thing seems to need a little bit of tweaking. <laughs> In what way have you seen children disrespect authority? Oh my. I think particularly in high school. And it's an interesting kind of thing because I have one set of grandkids that are in the public system. And then I have another set of grandkids that are in the private system. And when I go to their private school, it's a very different scenario than what I see happening in the public school. And I think because there is a general rule for everybody, that everybody sort of, um, there's a respect that I have for you because you are another human being, you are God's creation. And in the public school, I, I mean, it's really the truth for me. I, when I, the scenarios, when I go to my grandchildren's school, I sense the difference. And so I think it's fundamental to whatever system that's gotten set up. And I don't know if I know how you can approach that because I have attempted to deal with some of it and what I get from the school board members, for an example, is, well, you know, that's a moral is issue, Mrs. Abernathy. And if that's an issue for you, then you need to put your kids in private school. So it's, at some level, I think, um, that we've lost the basis of what's important. And because maybe law, maybe the law won't allow it. I don't know the difference. But... Um, I do think that fundamentally the whole system, some of the systems would have to change. So do you think that religion plays a big part in how kids respect authority? 
Um, I do, but I mean, on the other hand, I've seen kids who are not, whose parents are not religious, um, and whose children aren't out of kilter. A lot of it, I think, comes from where parents came from themselves. Right. And so that's what they um, want to teach their own children. And I used to say to my own kids, I'm not going to hit you and beat you, but I remember having a neighbor who had a little one who allowed her four-year-old to punch her out, to yank her hair, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to yank my four-year-old's hair and punch her out, but I'm not gonna let her do that to me either. It's kind of a mutual respect here. Right. And so, um, I just think that maybe we've sort of gotten the wrong idea of what my right might be. And, um, okay, yeah, you can say and do those things. Um, I was always taught you can get more um, out of it with honey versus vinegar. So if you're going to go in and be nasty to somebody, don't expect that they're going to have much respect for you either. Um, if one kid got uh, disrupted the classroom, would the whole classroom be affected when you were growing up? Did well, that usually happen a lot? It didn't happen a lot because the kid was usually sent to the, to the office. <laughs> So is respect for teachers uh, different from the respect that you had for your parents? Was that really different or other adults? No, I think it was just pretty much adults. Now, I have to tell you, I there are a couple of things that I look back on. Um, and I can remember I had a fifth grade teacher. And it's the sad, crazy thing is I remember her name, Miss Beckett. And um, she... We had papers due, and she took um, she took my paper and threw it over her head, and said, "If I didn't pick it up, she was gonna slap the black tar out of me." Okay. Now I have to tell you, had that circumstance happened with my children, as it happened with my mother and father, yeah, we would have had some serious issues with that teacher. I mean, I probably would have wanted to take her up on suspension or something. Um, and partly because she had such a negative attitude. I, did, I don't think I learned much in my fifth grade class because of that reason. And I was humiliated and um, poorly treated. And I think that that's, to me, teachers don't have a right to behave like that. And while I don't know if I think teachers would behave as bad as she did today because of all the other you know, legal issues, I do think that they can still behave badly and um, get away with it. And I, I just think trying to find a way to have mutual respect. And sometimes that has to be taught. Or sometimes I have to tell you what it is that makes that makes me feel bad. So if you don't know that you are offending me, I need to be able to say that to you, that that is offensive to me. And um, I think that on both sides of the aisle, for parents, for teachers, for uh, leaders, for people who are subordinates, that people really don't generally in a lot of ways, or they think their opinion or whatever they think is more supreme and more important. Um, do you think, uh, oh, never mind. No, 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 go ahead. Do you think that uh, when people abuse their powers, that's what makes kids not respect them as much? Like if a teacher abused her power against you like in fifth grade, do you think that makes you not want to respect her as much because she's not giving you respect? Um, you know, that was really such a different time because um, it didn't make me not, I, yeah, I personally, I mean, I, I don't, I remember the names of two teachers 
And one was my kindergarten teacher, who I loved for some odd reason, <laughs> and this fifth grade teacher. I couldn't even tell you the names of uh, professors that I had at the university. So it's like those, those individuals had grave impact on me because I remember a lot about both of them. One in a positive way, my little kindergarten teacher, thank God, and this fifth grade teacher who I can sort of vaguely remember her face, but I remember what it felt like to be in her classroom. And um, today I don't think that she would get away with the overt negative stuff that she did for a lot of reasons. And do I think that kids need to respect her? What I do think is that there needs to be a process in place so that if you were in a teacher's classroom and she was overtly misbehaving, that there was a way in which that youth can find resolution to that. Oh, well, I'm kind of out of questions, so thank you. <laughs> okay. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. So this is with this is still the Will Patterson.